God's faithfulness to meet all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus our Lord. I don't know if you know this, but that scripture on which this song is based is taken from Lamentations, chapter 3, verse 17. Lamentations, if you're not familiar with Lamentations, it's a book of funeral songs. Out of devastation, the writer of Lamentations, And I pray that we'll know and feel and be able to live in that same way. That we'll know that regardless of what circumstances we find in life, that God's hand has fully provided. Amen? Amen. Let's greet one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. Cut 
Be seated. How's it going, guys? Great. You guys got, I heard you guys got a lot of rain, right? Two inches of rain, man, and some wind. So anyways, good, good, good to see you guys. If you want to turn to your bulletins real quick, we've got a few announcements that we have. Number one, if you can uh, look at it, so just a reminder, if you're in the admin team uh, at our church, it's, our meeting is today at 4 p.m., 4 p.m., uh, so just keep that in mind. And then on the 12th, right, uh, today, uh, on the 12th, make sure if you want to uh, add something uh, for uh, our members meeting, which is on, scheduled on the 23rd, make sure you do that. Uh, women's uh, Ministry 4C Outreach on the 14th at 6.30 to 8.30, bring a friend. And then we have our new members orientation class on the 15th from 10 a.m. to 2 at the Barton's Home. Lunch will be provided. So if you wanna, you're want to, you interested in more about our church, make sure you see uh, Mr. Wendell. And also, I'm excited to announce on the 26th, the end of the month, on the Wednesday, we're going to be kicking off a women's series. Uh, Ms. Fonda is going to be starting that with the book of Joshua. So uh, for women's on Wednesday night. And the men are also going to kick up a series called Stepping Up as well here in the sanctuary. So that will be a really good time uh, for us. Uh, we have various speakers in these video series for the men's. And the women, they're going to go hardcore. They're just going to go straight through the Bible, which is great, in the book of Joshua. So, um, And then also, as I said earlier, on the 23rd, our first quarter membership meeting following uh, Sunday service. And then on the 29th, if you look at the screen, we have our CPR training for children's volunteers from 10 a.m. at, at church. So if you're interested in that, we'll have some questions. Feel free to see Miss Brandy. Uh, and then th these are things that are coming up in February, our uh, men's retreat at Camp Allen on the 18th to the 20th. So uh, this is going to be great. We're going to have our uh, uh, director, um, Steve Doyle, from our association that will be speaking and leading for that. So if you men uh, and youth, uh, boys, uh, I would encourage you to look into that as well. So also the last thing is, uh, uh, towards the end of your uh, announcements there, uh, as I said this last week, we are launching our new church app this month. So this is a really good thing. There's a QR code there. You can take a picture of it, and that will lead you to setting it up. This is really quick access to our church website. So if you've not looked at that, that would be really great. And it's a quick link to, your ser to the sermons that we have on YouTube. And then also, it keeps you informed with the calendars and events of our church, which is awesome. Uh, there is a whole bunch of resource and media platform tools there. Uh, there's Right Now Media. I don't know if you parents, if you're looking for series or even videos and, and think Bible study for your kids that you can lead at home, uh, Right Now Media is provided free uh, for, uh, from our church to you, right? Uh, and then also it gives uh, information on online giving and credit, debit, and ACH transfers as well. So if you have any questions, Mr. Wendell will be in the foyer today uh, after service to kind of help set that up, and we we'll, may have some youth to help out with that as well. Uh, other than that, I think we have all our Christmas stuff. All, uh, I appreciate those that were uh, able to bring it down, uh, and then I think they're all packed up. And Are they all up in the attic already? Okay, so we have some, a few more things, so uh, if I can get some, some men uh, to help out a little bit, just a few little boxes here that's going to go into the shed. But other than that, welcome to our church. Welcome to a new year. Uh, let us pray. Father God, we come before you and thank you so much for giving us the privilege of meeting together as brothers and sisters in the Lord. We come humbly to you right now, Lord, and asking, Father, for each soul here represented at our church, uh, those that are checking us out on, on, on Facebook, um, we ask, Father, for your Holy Spirit to descend upon us today and may be, uh, we re be ready to receive your word in our hearts, Lord. Uh, it talks about in the parables about this good seed, the seed that lands in good soil, uh, ready for it to be planted deep and hopefully harvested, Lord God, to maturity, Father. And that is what our desire here is from teaching our little kids, Lord, the Bible letting it plant in their hearts, even as adults, Lord God, and for, uh, for you to harvest that in your timing and for us to grow in maturity and spread the good news of Jesus Christ throughout all the nations and all the world. Father, we love you. Give us thanks, Lord, and um, I pray that you would accept the worship we have to you today. In Christ's name we pray, amen. All right, Brother Carl.
Oh, it's a new year. There's all those resolutions for how you're going to do better. How many of you kept a single one of them so far? Anyone? Anyone? Yeah, I didn't think so. Well, here's the good news. God is graceful. He's forgiving. But you know what he wants us to do? He wants us to step into life and into maturity. And that means walking with him humbly and, and obeying. Whoa, that's the hard one. But it's, it's little steps, you know. So if you haven't stepped into generosity before, it's a good time to start. You don't have to start with some legalistic number. Just start. Start where you are and let God give you direction about what he wants you to do. So, guys, if you would, at this time, would you come forward? We're going to worship together. We're going to receive a, an offering, and we're going to use that to be a blessing to this community. So we're not giving to Fellowship at Field Store, but we are giving through Fellowship at Field Store, and it's God who's going to do the work. Amen? Zach, good to see you, man. Would you lead us in a word of prayer? us to sing worthy of every song we could ever sing worthy of every praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you we live for you Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you, we live for you, holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you, open up my eyes.
with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in you. Your love, O oh Lord, reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness stretches to the sky. Your righteousness like the mighty mountain your justice flows like the ocean tide I will lift my high voice to worship you my King I will find my strength in the shadow of your wings. Your love, O oh Lord, reaches to the heaven. Your faithfulness stretches to the sky your righteousness is like the mighty mountain your justice flows like the ocean tide I will lift my high voice to worship you, my King. I will find my strength in the shadow of your wings. I will lift my voice to worship you, my King. I will find my strength in the shadow of your way. Your love, O oh Lord, reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness stretches you give life, you are love, bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart. It's your breath in our lungs, 
So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise with your bread in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing, great are you, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing, great are you, And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. Lord, I'm so glad that we sang this song today. I'm so glad that in our Sunday school we had a study in Ezekiel chapter 37. God, you told Ezekiel to prophesy to a, a valley full of dry bones. And when he did, even though he had been talking to the Israelites for the other 36 chapters, they weren't listening to him. But God, when he started to speak, you started to move and the dry bones came together. And they were suddenly filled with tendons and, and flesh and nerves and blood vessels and organs and skin. And there they were, bodies, but they still weren't alive until you told him to prophesy that your breath would fill them and bring them to life. And God, you, you called this group of dry bones the whole house of Israel to illustrate the promise that God, your word, never fails, that your promises are always yes and amen. And I can imagine that when they received your breath and they stood, the first thing that they wanted to do was to shout your name, to shout your praise. God, I pray that you'll fill us with a desire to carry this message of redemption and forgiveness to a bunch of dead people who don't know that you're even around. Help us to be faithful in our mission to bring this good news, not to make bad people good, but to make dead people alive. Help us to carry that message here in Field Store and in Waller County and wherever you take us, whether it's in our job, whether it's on a mission trip, whether it's on a vacation, God, help us to take your message of redemption and salvation with us everywhere we go and to give you glory with the, with the breath that you put in our lungs. Thank you for your spirit that lives in us who are believers. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for giving us wisdom and guidance and direction. We pray over our Pastor Jackson this morning that as he shares your word, God, that you would speak to our hearts, that you would speak clearly to us, that you would give us your message, and that, God, we would walk out of here in obedience with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Amen. All right, you may be seated. Let's give these uh, our worship team some time to get to their seats. All right. Okay. Have you ever taken a detour? So what is the purpose of a detour? The detour is needed simply because perhaps there is a blockade in front of you, right? A detour is needed to get through the destination that sometimes often may take it take you a little bit longer to get there. A detour can take you to places that perhaps you've never planned to be or never intended to be. A detour is needed for the safety of others on the road and people in your vehicle. Nonetheless, it will still get you to your final destination. Today I want to take a detour from our study of Judges to a series about life. A series about life, and particularly the time that God has given each of us. If you guys recall, in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 1, the mystery of time. The mystery of time. There is an occasion for everything. A time for every activity under heaven. A time to give birth and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to uproot, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to tear down, and a time to build, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to throw stones, and a time to gather up stones, a time to embrace and a time to avoid embracing, a time to search, and a time to count as loss, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear down, and a time to sow, a time to be silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. You see, everyone is given... Everyone is given 24 hours a day of time. You are given that time. I am given that time. It doesn't matter if you live here in North America, you're given 24 hours. It doesn't matter if you live in South America or or, or other continents like Europe and Asia and elsewhere, you're still given 24 hours of time. Whether you are a Democrat or a Republican or, or, or an Independent, you're still given 24 hours of time. Whether you're young, whether you're old, you're given 24 hours. Whether you're a man or a woman, you're given 24 hours. Recently, I had a privilege as pastor of our church and our church body to be able to lead and host a funeral service for two members of our church. And you know who they are who recently passed in the month of December. And one thing about funerals is that it forces us to look at life, the time we have left. Many of you guys have been there as well, or perhaps you've been to other funerals. A funeral makes us take a second thought, a brief pause, or a moment of reflection on the time that God has for us. Funeral makes us wonder how fast the clock is ticking. Funerals force us to look at our time clock, our life, our marriage, our children, our legacy, and sometimes our failures and regrets. Funerals force us to look at why we are living and how we are living. Are we living for ourselves or are we living for the holy God? There's no distinction between. Uh, you're either for Him or you're against Him. You're either hot or you are cold. You're obedient or disobedient. Are you for His will or your will? The question is, with the time God has given each of us, is He your anchor? Is He your living hope? See, hope is a big word. Let, let me tell you more about what hope is not. Hope is not wishful thinking, right? It's not, oh, 
I, I hope that the Texans win today. Right? It's kind of a lost cause. I hope that, that uh, the Vikings may win today. I hope that the Dallas Cowboys may win today or whatnot, right? I hope for peace in the Middle East, right, is what they used to say when I was younger. I hope that, uh, that everyone would be fed and it would stop hunger. I hope to, for New Year's resolution, I hope to, to exercise more. I hope to lose weight a little bit more. I hope that this year would be better than last year. I hope I don't get COVID, right? See, rather, hope is anticipating with confidence, with confident expectation that God is who he is and will fulfill his plans with faithfulness to mankind through his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. That is what true hope is. That is what biblical hope is. So I want to share with you, if you want to turn real quick, and, and you guys have um, your sermon, not notes, but sermon, uh, a, a place there where you can write your, 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 uh, your notes, and I, or if you have your Bibles, to write it and start practicing. Pencil these things in. We're going to go through 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 9. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 9. So one of these, these things is, with our app, is that you can take notes. Isn't that cool? You can take notes in on your app. Or if you have your Bible, if you have your bulletin, wonderful. If you have other versions of, uh, of, of, of Bible apps that you use, take notes. But I want to share with you the living hope as it's recorded in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 9. So in reverence of God's word, let's all stand in him as we read his words. Verse 3. Praise God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to His great mercy, He has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, uncorrupted, unfading, kept in heaven for you. You are being protected by God's power through faith for a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. You rejoice in this, though now for a short time you have had to struggle in various trials so that the genuineness of your faith, more valuable than any gold which perishes through the refining of fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of you love him, though you may not have seen him, and though not seeing him now, you believe in him and rejoice in inexpressible and glorious joy because you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your soul. So the title of today's message is The Living Hope. What does living hope mean? In verse 3, it says, praise God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It starts there. The praise is the subject here. Praise God, the Father of our Lord. Who is God? I think sometimes when we do praise and worship, we praise, we have our hands up, right, and ready, to, or, or when we praise Him. But it's a good reminder of that we understand who God is. Let me give you some reasons we need to praise Him. Number one, is that God is a mission. God is a mission. Omni, it, it means many, right? All. is God is all knowing. God knows all things and is absolutely perfect in knowledge. Job chapter 37, verse 16. I don't know if you know, studied the book of Job, is, is that Job had it really hard, didn't he? So at the end when he had credibility to say what he did, and this is what he's saying about God's omniscience, that God is all-knowing. And he says this in Job 37, verse 16, the wondrous works of him, which is perfect in knowledge. The wondrous works of him, which is perfect in knowledge. See, Job could now explain the wonders of the natural phenomena around much less the purposes 
and the reasons why he went through what he went through. See, as recorded in the book of Job, he's never, ever, ever blamed God. Right? And, 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 and Job had his four friends that come, that came to him. Right? Am I losing? There you go. Hello? Testing? There you go. Got it. His four friends gathered around him. And they didn't say a word to grieve with him. But later he realized that those things that happened around him and his friends were there, they didn't really understand the full knowledge of God. Only God knows that. And Job sees in reverence and in testimony of God what God has done in his life. Psalms 147 verse 5 says this, His understanding is infinite. He who can outnumber, right, number and call the stars is able to call each of them by name even out of their captivity. His knowledge is not to be measured by others. So this is David looking up at the stars. And he's counting. He's like, no way. God knows everything here. If he knows everything here in the stars that is a distance away, then God knows who I am. God knows my every situation. 1 John chapter 3, verse 20 says this, God knoweth, this is the King James Version, God knoweth all things. See, our hearts may pass over certain things and fail to see some things that should be, should be addressed, but God, however, sees all. Nothing is hidden behind Him. So when you praise God, I want you to think about this. These are very solid principles of who God is. These are characteristics, or, or another word is His perfection. He's the perfect God. He's omniscient. Not only is He omniscient, He's also uh, he's all-powerful, omnipotence. The omnipotence of God is that attribute by which He can bring to pass everything He wills. God's power admits of no bounds, or limitations. He can do it all in all, right? And it says this in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 and 3, God created the heavens and the earth. God said, let there be light, and there was light. Thus he spoke, and it was done, and he commanded it, and it stood fast. See, not Elon Musk can't do this, <laughs> right? All the great minds of the past and in the present and in the future can't do this they can cre create good phones <laughs> maybe good cars depending on what you think of good cars good battery life good technology right fast internet right 5g but god sees it all he's powerful he doesn't need those things when he speaks he can do that's who god is so so think about that as we praise him. And I think sometimes we use praise and, and we use that and, and say, yeah, we praise him. But do you really praise him? And the way to praise him is to understand who God is, his mere perfection. Luke chapter 1, verse 37 says, for nothing will be impossible with God. Right? So he takes a woman that's old, that's barren. And when you're a barren woman back in, 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 in the early, early parts of the century, you are looked down upon. But this is before all these in, in vitro and all these different, you know, all these stuff that we have now. But God says, with God, with, with, with God, all things are possible is what the angels proclaim. So let me turn now to, to you that God is so powerful that, that he doesn't need to he doesn't need your help. I I, I shared with you I went to a, a, a Christian university and my, my roommate at that time when I was in my early late teens early twenties was a man named uh, Kevin Harris and he's a he's a man from uh, from Oregon and he had this desire to go and be a missionary he became a missionary to Tibet okay some 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 dude from Oregon all right just looks like you he goes and he goes to Tibet. And he was going and doing his scavenging kind of ministry, trying to see if this is where God wanted him. And he was on a, a, an a rickshaw. 
And he was passing through these temples, temples after temples and temples. And, and he asked the, the person that was driving and said, why are they making all these sounds in the temple? And this is what the driver said. Well, it's because these people were trying to wake up their God. They were clanging cymbals and all these things, trying to wake up these gods. Can you believe that? You see, God, our God, the God that we worship is all powerful. He doesn't need your help. He doesn't need my help. When he speaks, it happens. That's who God is. So when we praise him, oh man, we're praising the creator of all things, the God of God, the kings of kings. Job also says this, and, and I, I mentioned Job because I think he has the credibility of what we go through sometimes in life, and we can look to him and his example it says in Job 42, verse 2, I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. He's going to do it. God is going to do it. He has every power. He has everything, every authority to do what he pleases. Now, the other praise that we have in, when we pray and worship God is we have to know that God is omnipresent. God is omnipresent. Again, that's all present. Meaning that God is everywhere present. This attribute or perfection is closely connected to the omniscience and omnipotence of God. For if God is everywhere present, he's everywhere active and possesses full knowledge of all that transpires in every place. Let me share this with you. He could be in Texas, in Waller right now, and he could be at the same time in California. And he can be at the same time in, in, in Florida. He can be at the same time in New York and other par parts of the world, in the galaxy. He's there. See, he is everywhere. He's not constrained by time or space. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 3 says this, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. So whenever there are things done in secret, there are things that are done in the open, he is there. When you're alone uh, and, or, or when you are in this disarray, when there's times where there's pressure in mind, when there's joy, a celebration, he is there. It, sp it speaks about this in the New Testament where two or three are gathered, he is there. That, that's not to say that if you're by yourself, he's not there. No, no there's, there's unity when two and three gatherers of worship come together to praise the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 23, 24 says this, Can a man hide himself in secret places so that I cannot see him, declares the Lord? Do I not fill the heaven and the earth, declares the Lord? See, God is in all. Psalms 139, this is one of my favorite psalms, verse 7 to 10 says this. Where shall I go from your spirit? Where shall I flee from your presence? This is a psalmist writing this. If I send to the, ascend to the heavens, you are there. So, so meaning if, he's on a space, if you're in a space shuttle, if you go up, he's there. If I take my bed to show, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, the deepest parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your, hand, your right hand shall hold me. So God is there. He's in, in, intimately acquainted to each one of us. That's amazing. See, what we, we do sometimes is we partition God and say, God is only here at church. God is only here when this happens. God is only here when this happens. All the other time, he's not there. No, it's, there's no partition. God doesn't speak on like cubicles. He sees it all. Not only does God, that, that we can worship God in his omnipotence and his omniscience, right? Is that God is eternal. God is eternal. Psalms 90 verse 2 says this. Before the mountains were brought forth, even you have formed the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting. You are God. He has no beginning and he has no ending. Right? Revelation chapter 22, verse 13 says this, 
I am the Alpha and the Omega. He doesn't say, I'm the Alpha and the Omicron. <laughs> or I'm the Alpha and the Delta. I'm the Alpha and the Gamma. No, he's the Alpha, the beginning of the Greek alphabet, and then the Omega, the last letter of the Greek alphabet. He sees it all. He's the first and the last, the beginning and the end. And might I share you one more, a few more things about God when we praise him, that God is immutable. What does this word mean? Some of you guys think, what does that mean? God's immutability means that God's nature is absolutely unchangeable. He's not a change in God. He's not a chameleon, right? He adapts to the situation. No, he's not. He's God and he's God's constant. He's not, it is not impossible that we should possess one attitude at one time that he does not possess at another. Nor can there be any change in the deity of God for better or worse. God remains forever the same. He's without the beginning, without the end. He's self-existing. He's the I am. He remains forever the same, unchangeable. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He's constant. He doesn't change. When, so when he says, I, I promise you that I have big mansions, many rooms for you in heaven, he doesn't change. When he says that you will gr- go through great difficulties in life, he means it. When he says that, 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 that the slave is no greater than his master, that you will per- face persecution and difficulties in the last days, he means it, right? James chapter 1, verse 17 says, it's one of my favorite verses, every generous act and every gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights. In him, this is the key, there's no variation or shadows cast by turning. He doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And one of the last things that I, I, I pray that we would, we would uh, uh, focus on is when we praise God is His old holiness. He's a holy God. Verse, uh, in 1 Sam, Samuel verse two, uh, chapter 2, verse 2, there's none holy like the Lord. There's none besides you. There's no rock like our God. Isaiah chapter 6, you guys know this from hearing. It, it, Isaiah stands in, in the countenance of the Lord and he says, Woe is me, for I am ruined, because I'm a man with unclean lips, and I live among people of unclean lips, because my eyes have seen the King of the hosts. Right? So he says, Holy, holy, holy. See, God is a holy God. God is not your homeboy. God is not your buddy. God is not just a friend. He's our God. So when you praise the Lord, think of these things. And, and I know I said this, this one, one last time. Actually, there's two more things about God. Is that God is righteous. God is righteous. God is just in all he does. God is upright in he, his ways. He operates with honesty. God always does the right thing that is appropriate for the moment. God is. Because God is righteous, he takes towards you and me always, and it is always right, just, and honest. And sometimes that righteousness and and just of God is sometimes hurtful. It's like, what? You're telling me this, God? You're righteous as just? Sometimes it hurts, but God is just. And we like to take the good things of God, the joy, the splendor, faithful, all those things, but God just? Ah, that's hard. Psalms chapter uh, 9, verse 4 says this, For you are upheld my right and my cause, sitting and thrown as the righteous judge. He's the judge. He's the judge, the living and the dead. But until then, he's given us his son, the perfectness of him, so that we don't have to face that judgment. He rules the world in righteousness and the judge judges the people with equality, right? And last, he's faithful. He's faithful. So what he says at the beginning, he's going to make sure he fulfills it to the end. What he says for you in the beginning, he will fulfill it to the end. 
That's who God is. He remains faithful even to the faithless. So let, now we talked about praising God. I know you're like, everything. okay, this is too much information, but I want you to really think through when we praise God. It's, it, we praise God not sometimes, but all the time. But we praise Him and we praise His name. You know, God has, has names. And let me just share with you the names of God. And the names, the purpose of names is, 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 is it's, it's personal, right? You name your kids... Because of, it's really close to you. I remember this when, when Joy and I were having uh, our first uh, child. Um, you know, I, was, uh, I worked in, a, in, in healthcare, and then she was a school teacher. So whenever I would pick out a name of a name of, uh, that I think I, that I'd like, and she would say, no, no, Jackson, that, you know, don't pick that name because that, I have that name. I have one of those students with that name, and he is horrible in class, or she, right? And then she would pick out names. Of, of, of one that she really likes. And I'm like, well, you know, I have a patient like that. They're, they're on a ventilator. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to choose that name, right? So it was really hard to pick. But see, names are personal. There's a connection there. And in biblical time, names were given for reason. They stood for something. Sometimes it's passed through through generation, or sometimes it's a promise that the parents made before they had their, their son or their daughter. And they want to make sure that, that that name lives through their son or their daughter, right? So likewise, it's the same thing. All the names given to God in Scripture denotes His personality. Here are some. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. You guys heard this, right? Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord, our peace. Jehovah Ra, the Lord, is my shepherd. Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord, our, is our righteousness. Jehovah Shema, the Lord, is present. You see, God's name. It's amazing. Do I need to share more of how we need to praise God? Not sometimes but all the time. That is the living hope that we have as Christians. All the time. So with living hope, we need to understand that His mercy is more. His mercy is more. According to His great mercy, He has given us new birth into the living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, uncorrupted, unfading, kept in heaven for you and me. You see, His mercy is the inheritance as promised to you. We're given a new birth. When we become Christians, Not we don't live for ourselves anymore. We're new. It's almost like we get a new birth certificate, right? A new beginning, new life, new hope through the words of Jesus Christ. For we were dead, and He's given us new. What, shall, what has God done for mankind? He's given us mercy. He's given us in the mercy. In the Bible, we ha all have sin. You and I, we all have sin. As a result of our sin, we all deserve death and eternal judgment in the lake of fire. Given what we deserve, every day we live as an act of God's mercy. If God gave us all that we deserve, we, we would all be right now condemned for eternity. You see? So when we sin against God, and you guys know this, Listen, youth, when we sin against God, that separates us from holiness of God. And there's this big divide that only Jesus, he's our miracle bridge, can come through so that we can have holiness. Not for our own doing, but his works. Right? So yes, he's given us mercy because we all deserve death. Psalms 51, this is a, uh, one of the verses that I, I remember early in, 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 my, in my faith journey. This is where David was confronted by Nathan the prophet. You see, David was the, the, the king. Everyone knew David. He, he has built more territory and land than any other time. And, and, and you guys know the story. He, he, he was supposed to be in battle at that time. But he left his post and he said he, he started to, you know, he wanted to kind of chill, go to the spa. 
And he sees this, this woman bathing. And he said, I want her, is what he said, although he, he was married. He had all these responsibilities, and, and therefore that, that, that lust became cover up for murder and lies. So Nathan, the prophet, confronts him. And David cries out in Psalms 51, verse 1 to 2, he cries out, have mercy on me, God. According to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out, take away my transgression. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. See, to recognize mercy, you have to admit that we are sinners, that we are sinners. I'm a sinner. Right? And it starts from there. It's an admission that we deserve death, but God, through his rich mercy, comes and becomes that penalty. See, the key is, is, is pleading for God's mercy and asking him to show kindness without withholding, withholding the judgment that we all deserve. So guys... We're praising Him. We're praising His name. And we're recognizing His mercy. That is our living hope. You, sometimes you have to understand where we, count, we, can't, we came from. Romans chapter 9, verse 14 says this. What shall we say then? Is there injustice with God? Does He show mercy for some people and not for others? Absolutely not. Verse 15, for he tells Moses, I will show mercy, and, and to whom I will show mercy, I will have compassion. On him I will have compassion. So then it does not depend on human will, your will, your goodness, and my goodness, but God who shows mercy. You see, his mercy is always more. His mercy is always more. God gives always more than the world can give. Lastly, living hope means Asking God for protection. Asking God for protection. Verse 5, it says, You are being protected by God's power through faith for salvation that has already been revealed in the last time. You rejoice in this, though now for a short time you had to struggle in various trials so that the genuineness of your, uh, genuineness of your faith, more valuable than gold, which perishes through refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Pain and suffering is only temporary to authenticate your faith. Pain and suffering is only temporary to authenticate your faith. James 1 says this. I was doing a devotion last night with my kids, and, and we do devotions. I wish every day, but we don't. It's something I'm working on. And I read them to, to them, James chapter 1. It says, consider it great joy. Circle that. My brothers, whenever you experience various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, but endurance must do its complete work so that you may mature and be complete, lacking in nothing. See, the genuineness of our faith has to come through endurance. Yes, you are going to face different oppositions, health scares, financial uh, situations, legal situations, anything in between, marital conflict, conflict in general. But when you go through those things, God molds you through, and that's where He refines you. But He refines you through heat, to heat up that metal. And He takes away the, the impurities. He takes away those things that are of His, and He makes you pure. So there... It tells us to val the validation of the genuineness of our faith is tested by fire resulting in the glorification of God. So yes, Christianity is hard. Yes, Christianity, you, you want to run that race, but sometimes you have no more, you have nothing left, you have nothing to give. But this is where what separates the men from the boys, right? This is what separates the, the, the mature and the immature this is what separates those that are really uh, uh, rooted deep within God and those that just kind of flicker away. Whenever there are times like this, we ask God for God's protection. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, this. You women, you guys understand this better than men. It says here, pray without ceasing. 
pray without ceasing. And this, this context of this is a woman that is about, she's about to go into labor and she's anticipating this baby. Yes, I'm going to go and, and kind of uh, 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 give birth. I have to go through the hospital and I have to see this doctor or a midwife. I have to go through that pain. But knowing at the end, whatever I have to go through, when I deliver this baby, it's going to be so joyful. See, that's the context of this. It's, it's anticipating that God is going to lead you through. Yes, it may be hard and it may be painful. That's when we ask God to protect our minds and our hearts. And, and let me tell you, women understand this better than men. <laughs> Where they're just kind of standing with scrubs or something like that. Just, you know, doing all, pretend, you know, the women is doing the hard work. Where they're just trying to get ready to catch the pass, right? And then touchdown. No, just playing. I'm just kidding about that. <laughs> that was just there to, to test you out there. So I, I tell you, I want to encourage you as your pastor. Don't make big, big decision in haste. Don't make big decisions in haste. I say this as, as a counselor, is that we tell this, and, and this is me sharing with, with families that I've met that were newly diagnosed with leukemia and lymphoma. And when the doctors and I meet and meet with them as, as families to tell them the, the, the really bad news. And you have fathers from all walks of life, mothers from all walks of life. Some you guys know, but I cannot break confidentiality. Some you may know. Some you've meet seen on TV. Where it doesn't matter whether you're young or old, whether you're rich, poor, whether you're blue collar, white collar, it doesn't matter. Your whole world changes. And what I tell these families uh, is that don't make big decisions when you're angry. Don't make the big decisions when you're depressed. Don't make big decisions when you're hungry. And may I add, don't make big decisions when you're sleepy or sleep deprived. Because you will regret it. So the protection of, is God's wisdom knowing that he's there to protect you and surround you, knowing that there's great joy when we encounter various trials, knowing it's to equip our character. So at the end, we will be mature and complete, lacking in nothing. Last, I, I know I said last earlier, this is my last point, truly, honestly, my last point. We have to understand the essence of his love for you. We have to understand the essence of his love for you. Right? Verse 8, you love him though you have not seen him. Though not seeing him now, you believe in him and rejoice with inexpressible, glorious joy. Again, this word joy comes in. Because you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of the story of love. The story of love. This is God's perfection. Let me just share with you too where love is exemplified all at once. Where love is exemplified when there is sin and sacrifice, forgiveness and redemption. And it happens at the cross at Calvary. All at the same time. His love Right? With sin, sacrifice, forgiveness, and redemption all happening all at once in the cross, at the cross at Calvary. Let me just share with you with this, this final verse, John chapter 3, verse 16. I'm sure you guys know this. For God so loved the world that he gave his one, he, he, it's not multiple sons, one, his son. His only son that whoever believes in him, whoever, different walks of life, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you've done or what you did not do. It doesn't matter if you've messed up a million times. He, that he, you who believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Amazing. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you so much. Thank you so much that we can rest in you. You are our hope. Lord, there are many, many ideas of what hope is, but we know that those are fleeting. Those are wishful thinking hope. But the true hope that we have is in you, that you are faithful, that you are always there.
You're there in every situation. That you are big. You, we can count on you. And that when you speak, you say things and it's going to happen. That you are faithful. You are righteous. You are eternal. You are, there's no beginning. There's no end in you. You are there through and through. That you are immutable. You never change. That we can count on you, Lord, of your mercy. Wow. Lord, I pray, my, I pray for everyone here that they would be encouraged when they praise God, praise you, that those perfections of your quality will come and for us to be reminded of your love eternally for us. Father, we love you. Thank you so much. Be with our church more than ever. Be with each member here, visitors, those that are going to listen in. Lord, we need you now. We plead to you as we start this year that you be the anchor, you be our living hope. God, let us not hope on those that have uh, powers and control over our country and other countries, not in economics, not even in the pandemic, whether they have the, the vaccine or not. It doesn't matter. Lord, our hope truly is in you and you only. Help us to be reminded of that. Father, we love you and give you thanks. In Christ's name, we pray. Amen. All right, I want to give you an opportunity to be able to respond um, as we always respond. <laughs> Maybe perhaps the response is in your seat. But perhaps the response is to come here to pray. So Joy and I will be here to be able to receive you. We want to pray with you. We want to pray for you. Or perhaps God is leading you. You know what? I just need to pray. I need to pray for my family. I need to pray for this year. I need to pray for our church and our community and our objective of reaching Christ. And it starts here. It starts with you. So this is your time. I want you to come and pray. This is my desire to honor you. Lord, with all my heart, I worship you.
Amen. All right. So I, I want to kind of share with you guys, Miss Kathy, if you want to come over here, uh, and Jeff, uh, we want to pray for Miss Kathy. Um, she's got some stuff that's going on with her personally, health-wise, uh, that we need to come together as a church to be praying for her. So won't you come? Uh, we want to come and, and, and bring... Actually, if, if you feel comfortable, just want to come and gather her. Miss Kathy um, shared with me, and she shared with her family that um, um, they found cancer in her. And um, so she's got some work up this week, uh, primarily starting tomorrow and on Thursday. She's having um, this cancer removed from her body so she can start treatment. So we want to gather around as brothers and sisters. We want to share with Kathy and Jeff that we love you guys and we will be praying for you through. Now, this is something that you cannot, and I've seen it many times, you can't go through this yourself. It's impossible. But that's when we as a church body would come together and to pray and really get on our knees for the Lord to do his healing and his mighty work. So let us pray as we gather today, and lifting up Miss Kathy and, and Jeff as he bears this and supports her as best as he can. So let's pray. Lord, we come before you. Thank you for being the miracle worker you are in our lives. Some of us wouldn't be here because we're without you. So Lord, we stand in testimony, Lord, of what you've done in our life, how you have been patient and you've been kind and you work bring things out in our life. And at the same time, Lord, I ask that you would continue to do so for Miss Kathy. I know that tomorrow is going to be a long day and, and this week, primarily Thursday, where she goes in and sees her doctor to get this cancer removed from her body. Lord, I pray for your hand to be upon her, knowing, God, that the faith, the assurance that she hopes for is in you, and that's our hope the living hope, that you're going to do things that's going to leave us wow. So Lord, I pray that you be with her, her body, her mind, her emotions, her heart, Father. Be with her to comfort her. Be with her when she's waking up at night thinking, what, what, if, what if this happens? I pray, Lord, for her, for you to comfort her, surround her with our church, our brothers and sisters in the Lord, to love on her and Jeff during this time. And Lord, perhaps there's many more, our members that are not here, going through very difficult times. I ask for you to be with them and heal them, heal their hearts, heal their body, Father. Lord, we ask and plead these things. And you know, Lord God, that we ask that you will give. So we pray for Miss Kathy, Jeff, this week and the weeks to follow. Father, we love you give you thanks. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 We love you.